In order to use Monero, the first thing that I need to do is to create a Monero wallet. I always like using brain wallets when I'm looking into a new cryptocurrency because it makes the dev experience significantly simpler. And I've already created a simple JavaScript command line tool for making Monero brain wallets called XMR Dev Tools if you want to follow along. I can install this library by doing npm i g xmr dev tools. And this will create a global executable command. I can run the XMR Dev Tools from my command line by writing XMR Dev dash tools and that will open up a node console. This is just a normal node.js REPL with a couple of global variables preloaded into the shell. My objective here is to generate a full Monero wallet from a single 32-byte seed phrase. A simple way to create 32-byte phrases is by using a SHA-3 hash. So first I'm going to create a password. And my password is going to be always be coding bang xmr screencast1. Next, I'm going to expand that password out by multiplying it by 1,000. So I'll set a variable called slug equal to password.repeat1000. And now that slug is this really, really long string that I'll hash down into 32 bytes. So I can use the JS SHA-3 library that I have preloaded into the shell to do a SHA-3 hash. So JS SHA-3 dot SHA-3 256, which is 256 bit or 32 byte SHA-3 encryption. And I will do that on the slug and I will save this as a variable called seed. And now this seed is a 64 character hex string that I can use as the seed phrase to my Monero wallet. But just one other thing that I'm going to do for extra security, instead of just running that hashing function once, I want to run it a thousand times. So I'll do lodash, which is also a preloaded global variable in this REPL, dot times um, 999 more times, uh, and then I will set the seed equal to js sha3 dot sha3 256 of the seed. And now if I look at that seed phrase, that has been a thousand SHA hashes of the um, password expanded out a thousand times. And I actually think that this workflow of making large strings, expanding them outwards, and then hashing them a bunch of times is a pretty good way to generate brain wallets for development. But as always, I'll still recommend using hardware wallets for any kind of long-term crypto asset storage. As of the time I'm recording this video, Monero is not compatible with any of the major hardware wallets, but there's a bunch of work being done on that front, and I'm hoping that we will see a Monero hardware wallet released at some point next year. Now, in order to create a wallet, I can run var wallet equals new XMR and pass in the seed as an argument. And now if I look at that data structure that's generated, it, you'll see that it's an object with five values on it. It has a secret spend key, a public spend key, a secret view key, a public view key, and an address. All five of these values are deterministically generated from the seed. So if you have the seed or you know how to generate it, you can always create these values. And these five values in tandem are what we call a Monero wallet. But this is just local JavaScript code. If I want to do anything like check the balance of this account, it's going to require interaction with the live Monero network. Bitcoin and Ethereum make this simple because they have robust ecosystems that provide hosted nodes you can connect to remotely. Unfortunately, as far as I can discern, the Monero ecosystem doesn't really offer one of these services, meaning if you want to interact with Monero, you're going to need to run your own node. If you're going to run a crypto node, I highly recommend buying something like this. This is a Samsung T5 one terabyte SSD hard drive. It's a great product. It's the size of a business card and easily fits into your pocket. You can carry around with you and you can sync local nodes for multiple cryptos on it. You don't actually need one terabyte to run Monero. The current size of the Monero blockchain is around 35 gigabytes. So any SSD that's at least 100 gigabytes should be good for a while. You definitely will need an SSD though. So in order to run a Monero node, I'm first going to need the Monero daemon. In order to get the Monero daemon, I'm going to go to getmonero.org slash downloads and find the daemon executable for the operating system that I'm running. I'm on OSX right now, so I'll go to the OSX section and download the command line tools for Monero. There are two options for what to download. One is the command line tools only, and one is the um, command line tools plus the GUI Monero wallet. I only need the command line tools for right now, but I will download that GUI wallet later. 
once the file is done downloading, I'm going to need to unpack the tar file that downloaded. So let me go to my desktop where this downloaded and I can run tar um, JXF Monero dash and then this whole um, thing that it actually downloaded. And once the um, tar file is unpacked, I should be able to CD into the file that was extracted or the folder that was extracted. And I'll see that it contains five executable files, Monero D, which is the Monero daemon, and then four other ones. So I'm just gonna move these all onto my path with mv um, dot slash star and then slash user slash local slash bin. And then once they're all in my binaries folder, I should be able to go back into that um, XMRcast folder that I was in, I should be able to do which Monero D and it should be able to read it from my path. So if you can find the Monero daemon executable on your path, then you have the Monero daemon successfully installed. And now in order to run the Monero daemon, all that I have to do is run the command Monero D. But I want to pass in one option to this executable because I want the data directory that Monero syncs the chain data to to be that external SSD that I have attached to my computer instead of my local hard drive. So I'm going to pass in a flag dash dash data dir equals slash volumes slash Samsung underscore T5, which is the directory of my SSD, and then slash Monero slash chain data. Um, and I will hit enter. Now, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to try to look and see if there's blockchain data already synchronized from there. So you'll see that um, I, my, my Monero blockchain has actually synced up to block 1,466,935, and the head of the blockchain that it knows about is only 114 blocks ahead of that. That's because I had been running a local node previously to removing that SSD to record this video. So it's going to figure out where you are synced up to, and then it's just going to start syncing automatically. It's going to sync in blocks of 20, and this can take uh, quite a long time if you have not synced the blockchain before. So when I first synced this on my um, SSD, I think that this took around 18 hours to fully sync the Monero blockchain, and it took 35 gigs of space. But this one should go quickly, so I'm just gonna let it sync, and I'll be back in a sec. Once your blockchain is synced, you should get a message like this that you are now synchronized with the network and you may start using the Monero Wallet CLI to interact with the live network. So now that I have a Monero node synced, I'm going to try to do something like check the balance of the address that I created earlier. And right away, I'm going to run into an issue. Because of the way that Monero generates one-time stealth addresses for each transaction, there's no simple lookup that I can run to check the balance of this account without needing to iterate over every single transaction. It would be a tremendous hassle to iterate over every transaction every time you want to run a query against Monero. So fortunately, we can create a synchronized wallet locally that caches the result of that initial scan and makes query access simple. So in addition to syncing the chain data locally, when you create a Monero wallet, you're going to need to perform an initial scan of the Monero blockchain to figure out which transaction outputs your wallet is able to decrypt. This is not as time consuming as syncing the blockchain, but it can take an hour or so if you need to scan the entire chain from block one. So I'll show you how you do this. I am going to use the Monero wallet CLI to create a synchronized wallet from these keys that I generated earlier. So I will run Monero wallet CLI and then dash dash generate from keys. And I need to pass in the name of the wallet file that I want to live locally on my disk. I will pass in the name screencast. And it's going to ask me to paste in the standard address, which is this guy. Then next, it's gonna ask me for the secret spend key, which is this guy. And then finally, the secret view key, which is this guy. And then it's going to ask for a password because the um, file that locally lives on my computer is going to be encrypted, so I'll type in a simple password. And then it's going to ask me um, where it wants to restore the blockchain from, what height of the blockchain. And this is basically saying that it's going to start scanning the blockchain for UTXO outputs that I am able to decrypt with these private keys, but it doesn't necessarily need to scan the entire blockchain if I know that the only time this account was used was somewhat recently. Um, I would always recommend scanning from block zero if you don't have any other idea of what you should do. But I happen to personally know that I've only used this address once and I sent one transaction not too long ago. So I'm just going to say I'm going to scan from block 1,300,000. And I'm going to hit enter and you'll see um, how it starts importing the blocks. And you'll see that this does take a little bit to complete. It shouldn't take too long, but I'm going to fast forward a couple minutes to when this wallet is fully synced and I'll see you then.
And as the wallet is synced, I should get some console output displaying which transactions the scan found. In this case, it found a transaction right here, TXID 2C2, where this wallet received 0.088 XMR, which is something in the neighborhood of $25. It also drops me into this REPL when it's done where I can run commands. For example, if I wanna check the balance of the account, I could run the command balance and it'll display the balance and what is called the unlocked balance. Um, if I want to get a list of all transactions to and from the wallet, I can run show transfers and it'll say that there has been one transaction, which is a transaction into the wallet of this amount with this TXID. If I ever want to get back to that command prompt without needing to resync the wallet, I can run Monero Wallet CLI with no arguments, and it'll ask me to specify a wallet name. Now, because I named this wallet Screencast, I can put that in, I can put in the password, and it will automatically find that wallet that has already been synchronized, and it can tell me that this is the balance, and this is my command prompt where I can ask more questions about it. So I'll show you something else that's interesting. So if I go back to that list of TXs that have been involved with this wallet and I copy this transaction ID, Monero actually does have some semblance of something like a blockchain explorer. So this is one example of what blockchain explorers in Monero look like on xmrchain.net. And this is a um, text-based block explorer that has no JavaScript or cookies to help preserve privacy. And if I paste in that transaction hash, You'll see that it does have information about this, but a lot of it is masked. So it knows what block this transaction was in, it knows what the fee was paid, it, it knows um, that it used ring confidential transactions, but it doesn't know anything about how much Monero was sent, or who it was sent to, or who it was sent from. So this is a kind of cool way to start diving into more and more um, detail about how the Monero protocol works. One thing you can do from these blockchain explorers is actually use your view key to verify information about that without needing to give up your spend key. So for example, if I copy my Monero address here into this field and I copy my private view key into this field and hit decode outputs, I actually can see that I was able to decrypt this output and I know that it was a transaction for 0.088 to my Monero address. And this is cool because you can do this just using your view keys. So even if this site was somehow compromised, it still wouldn't be able to have any information about how to send your Monero from your wallet. So now I'm going to attempt to send a Monero transaction. I'm going to use shapeshift.io and attempt to convert some XMR into Ether. So let me set up this transaction by choosing Monero as my input currency. And then I'll have Ether as my output. And the ether address I'm gonna send it to is just what I have in MetaMask right now, which is my public Decipher YouTube um, donation link. And then the Monero refund address that I'll use is the address of this wallet. So here, and I agree the terms and start transaction. And Shapeshift will generate the details of this transaction. But there's something that's very important to note here. And that is that Shapeshift requires something called a payment ID in addition to the address. Now, like we saw before, the process of creating a new Monero wallet is somewhat time consuming because you need to scan every transaction to know the wallet's true balance. And this could be a nightmare for third-party services like Shapeshift, exchanges, or darknet markets that require multiple addresses so that they can hold XMR on behalf of users. Monero's solution to this is to use something called a payment ID. This is a unique identifier that you can specify with every transaction so that third-party services can run one single synced wallet, but it can still distinguish between multiple different accounts because they can just look for all transactions with that specific payment ID. Warning, if you do not specify this payment ID when you are sending XMR to a third-party service, you are probably going to lose your money. So in order to now send this transaction, I can go back to my command REPL for my wallet and I can run the transfer command. And the first thing that I'm gonna to need to put in is the address that I'm sending it to. So this is the deposit address for this um, Shapeshift wallet. And then the next thing I'm going to need is the amount that I'm gonna send. So I'm gonna send 0.05 XMR. And then finally, I could hit enter right now and this would send the transaction to Shapeshift. But again, because it doesn't know about the payment ID, it wouldn't know who, which of the Shapeshift's users was sending it Monero. So it wouldn't be able to resolve it into the Ether um, conversion that I wanna do. So I'm gonna copy the payment ID and then I'm going to um, add that to this transaction and then I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask me for my password. 
And then it's going to uh, say that at the current fee level, there's a one block backlog. I'm just gonna say yes. Um, and I'm gonna agree to the default transaction fee of 0.01 from the wallet. And it says that the transaction has been successfully submitted. So I should be able to do show transfers and it should show me that I have a pending out transaction for 0 0.5. I should be able to look at XMR chain and see this actually. And I'll see that on xmrchain.net, it actually does know about this transaction hash. And again, it doesn't know who the sender was and it doesn't know um, how much the outputs were for. And if I go back to Shapeshift, I see that Shapeshift actually has been alerted of this transaction. So I just sent this command from my command line, Shapeshift has received it and it's going to exchange that into ETH and deposit it in my wallet. And looks like the Shapeshift transaction worked. And if I go back to my command line, I'll see that this transaction has actually been confirmed which is why it's in purple. So that transaction worked. Hopefully that is a decent overview um, of getting you started using Monero in practice, but there is still a lot more to cover. So stay tuned.